All right, good evening, everyone. My name is Andrew Murray. I'm the academic advisor for the Department of English, advising students in English and film studies. I wanna welcome you to what is now the second annual I Want to Know What You Did Last Summer Internship Showcase event. Thank you for being here. Uh, we have a great student panel joining us today to share a little bit about their experiences um, in internships um, in the last summer and, and even some before that. Um, today, um, there's going to be opportunities for you to ask questions and, and interact with our panelists. I hope that you'll take advantage of making connections with them, learning about their experiences, and, and, and taking their experiences to help propel you in your journeys um, as you move forward and looking for internships and, and career opportunities. Um, with that being said, um, you're welcome to use the Q&A function to submit some questions. You're also welcome to um, raise your hand and indicate that you have a question and I can um, unmute you and you can ask questions directly to our panelists as we go. Um, so with that being said, we'll do a really quick round table, have everyone introduce themselves and then uh, we will have them share a, a quick pitch on their previous internship experiences. And at that point, we will open it up for questions and, and conversation. Um, so if we could, can we start, uh, we'll start with Tessa. Hi, my name's Tessa. I am a senior film studies major with a fiction filmmaking minor. Um, I was supposed to intern in London this past summer and then um, COVID hit. So now I'm doing um, a remote global internship currently with the Studio Guild of Ireland. Awesome, thanks Tessa. Um, Jenna. Hi, I'm Jenna. Um, I'm also a senior, but I'm majoring in professional writing in English. Um, my internship was with MSU College of Arts and Letters for their marketing team. Um, and I was a communications and social media strategist and it was it is paid. Um, we have, they will probably be looking for people after I graduate. So if you're interested, it's a really fun place to work on and it's on campus. So that's nice. Awesome. Thanks, Jenna. Um, Kelsey. Hi, I'm Kelsey. Um, I'm a junior and I am an English major with a concentration in creative writing and a minor in sociology. And this past summer, I had an editorial internship with Our Media. Um, so I was specifically working in the custom publishing division and um, working on third party publications. Awesome, thanks so much. Um, Alexia. Hey everybody, I'm Alexia. Um, I'm a double major in communications and English. Um, and I interned with um, NSO, new student orientation at MSU. Um, it was a paid internship, um, but this summer we worked remotely as I'm sure everybody knows. Um, so we did an orientation online, which was different and interesting because I've worked with them for two summers now. So um, yeah, did you want us to say a, like about our internship now or is that for later? We'll come back to that, thanks. Cool. Uh, uh, Rachel. Hi, uh, my name is Rachel. I'm a senior um, in a, at MSU. Uh, my major is English with a concentration in creative writing. Um, and I entered at, interned at Robert J. Myers Wealth Management and LaSalle Street Securities in Frankfurt, Illinois. Um, and it was a paid internship as well. All right, awesome. And then Devin, do you want to introduce yourself as well? Sure, thanks. Hi, everybody. My name is Devin Hurd. Um, I am a senior majoring in humanities pre-law with a minor in leadership of organizations. Um, I currently serve as an intern for the College of Arts and Letters uh, doing resume and cover letter reviews. Um, and I also have had a judicial internship as well as an HR one with uh, the city of Detroit and the um, Court of Appeals for Michigan. Awesome, very good. Um, we do have one panelist missing that I hope will join us soon. Um, so we'll keep an eye out for Rebecca. Um, to get us started, if we could go around perhaps in the same order and have each of you describe your internship in a few sentences or maybe in 30 seconds, tell us a little bit more about the, the work you've done and the experience you've had so far. Um, so we'll go back to you, Tessa. 
Yeah. Um, so I messed up. I said Studio Guild. I met Screen Directors Guild of Ireland. Um, basically, it's a union. Um, they're a representative body for directors of Ireland, and they lobby and promote um, directors welfare. And so what I do for them is I am a special projects manager. So every other Thursday, we host live Q&As with different directors. I send out MailChimp's to our audience. Um, to the directors to say like what's going on, different events they can do to get involved. Um, I manage the social media and um, I do whatever else um, my boss tells me to do because <laughs> there's a lot that can fall under special projects, but it's a lot of fun. It is unpaid, but um, because um, there are five hours ahead, I've been working mornings and um, that's been working out pretty well for me. So yeah. So I work for, and I, I've started in the spring for College of Arts and Letters marketing team. Um, and I've, I moved over to the summer and I'm still in the fall and we'll probably go for it further into the spring as well. Um, for them, me and a few other interns work on writing articles for the college. We maintain their social media platforms. And for the articles, we'll write about students, faculty, um, events on campus, a lot of stuff and this summer I actually was able to do more digital work and help migrate our old site to a new platform so that was that taught me a lot I did I'm not a tech, techie person so that was great to learn and understand and showed me that marketing could be a part of my future and it is paid and it's it's like a family there so that's really fun and it's on campus you also get to learn more about the College of Arts and Letters and I thought that was nice since it's our college so Um, so being an editorial intern, basically, I, um, I did a lot of editing and proofreading, and that was usually um, like longer form projects for um, uh, other parties being published by our media. And then I also did a lot of um, article writing, which had to do with, um, I wrote for uh, Michigan wine country and Missouri wine country, funnily enough. And it was um, like I conducted interviews and I wrote and I was able to publish while I was with them. Um, and then the other stuff I did was like research anything my my managing editor asked me to do. Um, it was unpaid um, and remote. Um, but it was I thought it was a really amazing experience. And any time that I get to um, publish more is is a really welcome uh, opportunity. So for mine, I actually wasn't anticipating on it being an internship, but it's kind of something that I took and turned it into an internship of itself. Um, like I said, I've worked with new student orientation since last summer. So I started off as an orientation leader um, and then they give like awesome opportunities to move up in the department. So I applied and I got a position as a student coordinator. Um, and like I said, I needed an internship and another one of my coworkers had said that they um, use their job as their internship. So I kind of made it my own and talked to my boss and she signed off on it. And um, yeah, what I did was just work with like the new students coming in. Um, I wasn't a leader, but I oversaw all the leaders and I kind of just helped them and dealt with cranky parents when I needed to, talked to advisors when I needed to, um, made a lot of connections across cam uh, campus as a whole. Um, so it's been really good for making connections. Um, and then at RGM Wealth Man Management, um, my main responsibilities were growing their social media content as well as their client communication content. Um, and for the social media, I was in charge of things like their LinkedIn, uh, their Facebook, um, and writing and building their website as well. So there was a lot of marketing involved, um, and I was responsible for that. Um, as a career peer intern uh, with the College of Arts and Letters, I simply um, review and uh, critique resumes as well as cover letters or help students uh, develop them for job opportunities or just opportunities in general. Um, I also help with planning events for um, the College of Arts and Letters as it relates to um, maybe like career um, seminars and panels just like this. Um, I have also done some overlap with helping with uh, Cal NSO and enrolling them in classes also.
the internship is paid. And uh, I would also say that since I'm a senior that uh, it could pop up on Handshake uh, after the spring. Awesome, very good. So you might have noticed a pattern with our students. I, I did ask them to, to confirm or share if they were doing paid or unpaid internships. I think there's lots of opportunities out there. And there's also lots of resources, especially for those unpaid internships that MSU and the College of Arts and Letters can help offer funding if you find an unpaid internship. Um, as a reminder, you're welcome to submit questions in the Q&A, or if you'd like to ask a question, like you can indicate that in the Q&A and, and we can connect you to our panelists. Um, uh, another question I have to, to perhaps continue our conversation, um, could each of you share a little bit about how you connect your work in English or in film studies to the work that you've done in your, in your internships thus far? Uh, and I would say this is for anybody to go ahead and jump in. I guess for me, a huge one was just like communication as a whole. Um, that's kind of what I focused on is being able to talk to people and connect with people, um, as well as like communicating out with emails and just any sort of like documentation and making sure that everybody was kind of just getting the instruction they needed. Um, so that's kind of where I connected English and, um, you know, my internship together. Um, so currently, um, I'm in the fiction filmmaking minor. And for that, I'm doing the producing um, of the short film that we make. And uh, my internship has kind of helped like understand how directors are working with COVID and guidelines that they have to follow, um, as well as like different ways that they stay organized or how they work on film sets, um, how they communicate with their actors, different um, just techniques that you wouldn't uh, think of if you weren't on the job. So um, that's been pretty helpful. With my major, professional writing, it's a really broad major, but my internship showed me that my professional writing could be brought into the marketing world because I help write articles, which then come toward my English major because I didn't, I wasn't sure if I'd be able to write as much, but I wanted to. And our articles consist of like interviewing students or faculty, uh, doing research about um, events on campus, interviewing people who are running the events and it showed me a different part of professional or p2w now it's called um, professional public writing and it kind of gave me a definition of that major which was is always a hard thing to find if you are a p2w major um, and I feel that with the English, it helped me broaden my writing aspects and not just creativity, but more like telling a story in a different way. Um, for me, I think a really important part was um, I'm a like a fiction writer by trade and I also write a lot of poetry. So article writing and more like journalistic types of writing didn't wasn't something that really came very easily to me. Um, so getting to experiment with those different types and kind of working on um, condensing what I'm saying and, and that sort of thing was really, I, I felt was helpful uh, just as a whole. Um, for my internship, I had a lot of freedom to write um, with their website. There was no template. So I was able to do what I wanted to do. However, it is a restrictive business. So there's only certain things I can say um, on their website. So everything I wrote had uh, my employer had to foresee, so he had to, there were a lot of changes I had to make or things that he liked, but everything that I wrote was to better attract new clients and to best reflect or represent the business. So I had a lot of, but I had a lot of freedom to write and use my skills from English classes. Um, and I was also able to be creative, such as coming up with their tagline and things like that. So kind of second what Kelsey brought up about writing concisely. Um, I think uh, this internship has definitely been helpful for me because when people are doing resumes, you have to speak um, kind of in quick statements and it's not always so structural. And, um, you know, with the pre-law major, you're writing a lot of lengthy things and reading a lot of lengthy things. So this is a good practice because when you actually get into law school, uh, you'll find that people may do briefs or try to cut a lot of information down in certain instances. So yeah, this has definitely made me uh, a better writer overall.
Awesome. We have our first question um, from, from, the, from the group of attendees. Um, I'm going to combine this with another question. So their question reads, what is the best place to look for internship opportunities? Um, so if you have thoughts on that, we can go around the table, but also you might share, how did you find your internship? I found mine. I was looking for one and was having a really hard time. I wanted to go through public publication, but I couldn't find one and I, my advisor was emailing out all these opportunities. So really look at your advisor emails. They might have a hidden gem in there. I had that and I went out for it and got it. So always read your advisor emails. Don't skim through them. I know you get a lot, but I highly recommend looking through them, reading through them and seeing if you are interested in that internship or job opportunity. Um, so I've had three internships over the course of my college career. So my first one, um, I didn't have any experience going in. Um, I was a sophomore in college. So I did um, an internship with Home TV, which is based in Okemos. And I found them through a Google search. Um, so sometimes just Googling can help you find things um, pretty simply enough. Um, and then my second one, I interned for Traverse City Film Festival um, last summer. And um, that one I found through um, classmates. So you can find like your peers are good resources. You can ask them where they're interning, what they're up to. Um, if you have LinkedIn, you can always see what other people are up to. Um, that's what I like to do. And then for my global internship, I um, studied abroad last spring semester and that I was only there for two months, but I, when I was there initially, I was like, I don't really want to come home. So I was supposed to be in Ireland and Dublin, um, all the spring. And then for the entire summer, I was going to be in London. Um, then that got canceled. So I just found that through the study abroad page. Um, and then the one I'm current currently doing, I got an email about, but it's the same format of um, like it's kind of through the study abroad program, but not remote. That's a lot of words, but. <laughs> I just think for me, it's like super important to realize that like your like what you're applying for doesn't have to say it's an internship. Like you can completely take like your job and turn it into an internship. Um, so that's just like a really fun tip. It's not something that I knew that I could do beforehand. So I was like panicking that I was like, I have a job already. So like, how do I find an internship while also doing a job? Um, so it was just really nice to know that like I could turn my job into an internship. So I think that was nice. I would definitely add that um, Handshake is a great MSU resource where there's a lot of people, even alumni, a lot of times looking for students like us. Uh, so that's a great resource. Um, I would also add, um, I was going to say like good old fashioned networking and going to events and things like that, but that's kind of been uh, cut down due to COVID. But a lot of times just reaching out to people uh, who you've become acquainted with really helps. I mean, I've gotten some internships just based off the fact that somebody remembered who I was. So uh, definitely being outgoing is a huge um, component to landing internships that might not necessarily be available to anyone. Um, so yeah. Um, my internship, I did find it uh, through a Google search. I just happened to come across it. It wasn't listed on um, Handshake or anything like that. It was just through the company's website. Um, but another thing I would say is that um, professors were really helpful to me. Um, I had a couple of writing professors that I kind of talked to through this process. And even if it's not, you know, having them, if they're not able to specifically give you um, like the, the actual information for uh, an internship, they can also just be helpful in like narrowing your search, giving you an idea of like what type of internship you're looking for, uh, specific uh, places you can look at. Um, so again, like like other people have said, using the, the resources and the people around you do really want to help you out with that as well, so. Um, yeah, for mine, I originally started looking on LinkedIn um, and a few other websites, Handshake. Um, and then I decided to check in with my connections. So I checked in um, with my family at first. Um, and so I actually found this internship through my mom. Um, and from there, got an interview um, and fortunately got this opportunity. Um, but yeah, so another probably piece of advice is to check through like the people you know um, in your family as well, because you never know uh, what 
opportunities you can find that way as well. Awesome. Um, Rebecca, I want to have you jump in. Um, thank you for coming and joining us despite the technical difficulties. Um, if you would, could you introduce yourself, uh, say a little bit about um, your major, um, as well as your internship experience thus far? Yeah, um, sorry guys, technical difficulties. Um, <laughs> uh, yeah, my name is Rebecca Holman. I um, I'm an English major and I did the Disney College program. So last semester I went away to go to Walt Disney World where I worked as a lifeguard. Um, and it was one of the best experiences of my life. Um, I sort of applied to it as like a sort of, I knew it was always something I wanted to do. So I applied for it as like a test run sort of thing. And just so I could get a feel of what the application process would look like. And then I got in somehow. Um, <laughs> so it was very exciting. Um, it was a great internship. And then I'm also the Citizen Scholars intern. I do a lot of the social media stuff um, and things like that. So I'm glad to meet you all. Awesome. So our next question, um, do you have any advice for someone applying for an internship that can help make their application stand out? Yes, yeah, so um, what I would highly recommend is having someone look over your resume and your cover letter before you send it in, because you might think you have like the most magnificent resume ever. Odds are you don't. <laughs> um, I definitely had my resume torn apart, um, but there's like resources in Cal alone that um, are really helpful. So that's what I did. And there's like just different ways that you should word things to sound more professional and precise and um, just like knowing how to market yourself. Sometimes you just need a second eye to like look over everything. Just to second what uh, Tessa just said, um, spend a lot of time on your bullet points. Um, a lot of times people don't realize that you should kind of tailor your resume to the specific position or company that you're applying for. So a lot of times we figure, well, why am I not getting any opportunities um, or callbacks? It's not because your resume is bad, but you haven't really done the due diligence of um, kind of speaking to what they're looking for specifically. So, um, yeah, that's what I would say. Something I kind of learned, I'm like applying for jobs after graduation right now. Um, so finally getting my big girl job, but I didn't know that um, companies actually use a system that like looked for keywords within your resume. Um, and then if you didn't have it, they kind of just like threw your resume out. Um, so I've been like looking at job descriptions and fixing my resume each time I apply for a new job and adding in like things that they have in their job descriptions. So if you like do that, then you have like more of a chance of actually somebody like seeing it. So that's been really helpful. Alexia, are you talking about quick and loans by chance? Because I learned that the hard way. <laughs> I have no idea how I figured it out. Um, somebody told me they're like, um, you know, like you don't have anything that matches their job description in your resume. So they completely have gotten rid of you. Yeah, like, that's, oh. a great, that's a great point. Yeah. I guess for me, um, the, re the whole resume thing, that's very important. And then if you do get to like the interview step, be personable with them. Don't be like a robot, kind of connect. I connected weirdly in weird ways. Like I have a twin and then my employer now, he has twin daughters. So that was like a personal connection we like connected on. Um, so try to don't overdo it where it's all about you, but see things, recognize things and try to make that connection with them. So you're not looking just answering the questions right on that makes you not really interesting. Yeah, um, just a small thing, kind of just to agree with everyone. Um, I have been doing the same where um, each new thing I'm applying for, I'm researching um, the specific job and what they're looking for. And I'm having a new copy of my, my resume each time to make sure that it's reflecting the, um, the specific things that they're looking for. Um, and I'm going to agree with everyone else as well, um, especially when I was um, filling up or writing my resumes, I was also looking for keywords, reading the description really carefully to make sure I had a lot of those words in there. And also, um, 
Another thing is to not write too, too much information on one page, to just, just put what's most important to you and what you think would best reflect um, the job. And so when employers see too much, they might want not want to hire you for that reason. I'm also just going to volunteer Devin because I know he does resume reviews. <laughs> so since Devin's not going to say it himself, I will say it for him. <laughs> Thanks, Rebecca. Yeah, so I'll, I'll definitely also probably uh, give my information specifically on how to book appointments to Andrew after. But you guys are basically, uh, you guys should probably have my job because these are all points I made in the presentation today. Awesome. Um, somewhat related to this question, maybe folks can elaborate. Um, if I don't have anything on my resume that connects to the field that I want to go into, how do I break into my desired job or internship without those experiences? Um, so what I always like to do when I'm applying for something that might be like not is especially like what I have um, familiarity in is to tailor my resume um, to this job. So like even if I don't have the exact skill that they're looking for, if I have like applicable other things um, I kind of tailor like maybe you worked at like a grocery store or something. So then you have personable skills that you can um, communicate with others in a respectful manner. Um, just kind of uh, tailoring your skills that you already have and putting them into a job that you think that they would benefit from. And oh, kind of going off that um, for mine, I literally had like assistant coach on there, but seeing that like I was kind of in a leadership role and like worked well with others. I think that helps because I had nothing with marketing on my resume, but the words that you use in those bullet points, like Devin had said before, can show who you are as a, as a worker. And that might draw them to you, even if it doesn't have a connection to what you're applying for. And sometimes we'll um, kind of assume when we're writing our resume, because it makes sense to us that they'll be able to draw certain correlations but you shouldn't leave anything um, up to interpretation. So sometimes we can think to ourselves like, okay, well, obviously if I uh, was a manager here, that shows I have leadership abilities, but it's important that you point out, you don't wanna leave anything up to chance because you have to remember you're in a pile of 50, if not a hundred, and you really wanna stand out and leave nothing up to chance. Awesome, thank you so much. Um, our next question is uh, about letters of recommendation. Did any of you have to get letters of recommendation for your internships? I'll say a couple head nods, a couple of yeses, a couple of no's. Um, for those of you who said yes, um, say more about that. Who did you ask and what was that process like? So um, for an internship that I applied for but did not get, um, I did have to provide a letters of recommendation. Um, one of them was that I asked, she, uh, her name's Kate Sanka, she works for the university and I went on a study abroad uh, or study away trip to LA where we like did networking and stuff. And she was one of um, the uh, advisors for that. Um, and so I kept a close connection with her. Um, and then I would also ask like professors, um, if you have good connections with your professors, I think they're a really good resource because they want to see their students succeed. So um, those were the kinds of people I asked. I didn't have to for my internship that I have or job that I have, but I have had to in the past. And I think it's like really important to, or especially for like when I was younger, like coming in like my freshman year, I had to like really like think about, okay, like I don't really have that many connections with like professors and stuff. Um, so I even like looked back into high school and like asked like teachers that I was really close with. Um, I had my coach that I'm still like really close with and she still writes me recommendation letters like up until like now. Um, and then just like previous bosses that I've had is also super helpful. Um, just making sure that you don't end your job off on like bad terms um, and still like having that connection with a boss is like really important as well. Yeah, um, for mine, I ended up reaching out to the professor who was in charge of my research project that I was working on, and, and that worked out really well for me. But um, going through like that application process was something where I 
kind of thought to myself like, okay, like moving forward when I'm having more classes, I'm gonna try to like connect more with professors because I'm generally a quiet person, but it's something good to keep in mind to make sure that, you know, if you wanna have those connections, you wanna have people you can reach out to that you have a, um, a personal connection with them. So that if you ask for a letter, they can, they can speak from like experience and, and say things about you, so. Yeah, I would also add that you should be very strategic. A lot of times we just think, well, we can only ask people who um, we've had a lot of interaction with. Um, but sometimes if someone is in a specific field or can vouch for something that you, a skill that you need for that specific job or position, it might be better to get with them, uh, even if you don't have as strong as a relationship as you would with the other person. So I would just say uh, use your discretion and be um, strategic about that. I want to jump on something that Kelsey had mentioned, talking about establishing relationships with our professors, because that's um, one of the questions that just popped up. How do you all go about making connections with professors as it relates to then being able to reconnect with them and ask them for letters of support and recommendation? What tips or tricks do you have to, uh, to make those connections? Well, I'm really bad at it. I wish I did it more because um, I'm a senior now and applying to grad schools. I had to pull stuff out of my butt. But I highly recommend going to office hours. I wish I went to more. They're just times to like, even if you don't have anything to ask the professor, get to know the professor. A lot of them just want to sit down and get to know you, like have a cup of coffee with them in the morning, have a nice chat with them, get to know them, have them know you. So then they can remember who you are. And in your senior year, if you need a letter of recommendation, you can go to them. Um. Oh. No, go ahead. <laughs> Sorry. So um, for me, this is kind of more for like an in-person setting, I guess, because it's a little bit different with um, the pandemic and online learning. But I'm a chronically early person. So I would get to class like ridiculously early just for no reason. Like I'm just an early person. And um, so it would just be me and my professor and then they're just kind of, you're either forced to talk to them or you just sit there in silence for a weird amount of time. So um, yeah, so I would definitely just do that. And then also, I just think it really helps if you participate in class. Like um, for me, I just learn best when I'm talking and asking questions and participating. And so I would, um, your professors remember who's participating. So I would recommend that. Um, and mine was actually like perfectly piggybacking off of yours. Um, I was more, or I'm doing better at it now that we're like the whole like Zoom university thing um, because it's like easier for me to, I use like the private message function. So like I, I'll always like private message my professor. So they like see my name and they like know it's me asking the question. Um, so like just in terms of like how we're living life now, I guess that's like my big tip is like messaging them privately, like so that they know that you have like a personal question, um, because I know like sitting in a Zoom room of like 200 students can be like super intimidating and you don't want to be that one person to like turn your mic on and like have your background noise and like talk and try to interrupt their lecture. Um, I also have been doing like when they say something like I'll use like the clap emoji or like I'll use like the thumbs up like so that they know that I'm like engaged. Um, and in one of my English classes, he like actually is always like, oh, another thumbs up from Alexia. Like he like knows my name now just because he like always sees that like I'm the one giving like the reactions. Um, so just in terms of like now and how we're doing things right now, I guess like that has been really helpful for me. Um, for me, I would get um, in some classes if I needed help before or after school. Um, I would talk to the teacher then and ask them how they're doing, things like that. Or sometimes even if I was the last person on a class, I had teachers who would stop me and ask me how I was doing. And then I would ask them um, about how they're doing as well. So that's how I kind of grew connections with my teachers um, in that way as well. Um, what are some things that you all learned from your internship Maybe things that you expected to learn, but maybe also things that you didn't expect to learn through that just professional experience. So um, 
with Disney, it's kind of odd because, I mean, you don't, um, it's kind of, it's, lifeguard is not immediate, when you see a lifeguard, you don't automatically think, oh, yes, she's an English major. Um, so, um, the skills I learned really while working at Disney were, like, you know, teamwork and working in a group and, um, I want to be a teacher someday, so classroom management um, skills through, you know, how to communicate um, rules with people. You know, I could basically say, please stop running uh, on the pool deck in my sleep, you know, um, and learning how to communicate with people and um, things like that. So even if the um, internship might not seem immediately uh, English major E, it's always, you can always learn skills from it and learn new things. On that learning new things, I went in thinking I was just going to write articles, post on Instagram, all that. Well, we were, for our marketing team, we were shifting from a new website platform. So like I said before, I'm not a techie person. I was very nervous and they asked in the interview if I can deal with technology. And I was like, yeah, I know how to post on social media. And then they threw this at me. So thankfully I had a lot of people there to help. And it was a new tool I learned. I know how to use WordPress and Concrete 5 and how to, I could make my own website now. So that was a very good learning experience. But also I learned how to ask questions. I don't like asking questions because I feel like I'm a burden, but ask questions. They are there to help you and help you succeed, not fail. They, they want you to do good. It's their business. So don't be afraid to ask questions. Yeah, I, I have to agree a lot with uh, Jenna, but seeing that we work for the same uh, kind of organization, I can see a lot of the similarities. Uh, for instance, when I was hired, I was just thinking, well, I'll see students every day. Uh, they'll bring in their resume, I'll critique it, send them back, that's it, you know? But it has been a lot more than that. Uh, presentations, I do uh, classroom presentations. Um, I've also uh, had to work with WordPress sometimes with the website for Cal. Um, a lot of things having to do with uh, communication, planning things. So a lot of times when we're applying for these opportunities, you'll end up growing a lot because you'll be doing much more than is expected. And that's not a bad thing because um, it's more for you to put on that resume like we've already talked about. So, yeah. Yeah, one big thing for me that I really didn't expect going into an editorial internship and expecting to be writing and stuff like that was the amount of um, communication that was necessary, interviewing people and stuff like that. And, um, you know, before this, I was one of those, you know, Gen Zers that would rather do anything than make a phone call. So um, it was definitely something that, like, didn't come very easily to me at first. But um, having that opportunity and like that motivation to, to have to do it, I, I'm so thankful for because, um, I mean, that in general is just like a life skill that I probably should have developed a while ago, but didn't have. So it kind of, um, I think was really helpful for me in the long run. So for me, it's been really interesting to see how a film studies degree can be applicable to like marketing and website um, briefing. Sorry if you hear scratching, my cat is going insane right now for whatever reason. So that's great. But um, um, yeah, so I've had like my internship currently is like way away from like film theory and that kind of like even film production. Like I've been um, sending out like mass emails. I had to create an infographic. Like I don't have a graphic design background or anything like that. Um, I had to figure out how to create a website brief because um, our company is moving websites and we're hiring people and I had to figure out what we needed in a website. And then I also had to update our old website and like add profiles. So I had to figure out how to do that. So it's been like a lot of learning on the spot, um, which is nice, but it's also kind of insane. But um, it's like nice to have like um, these new skills that I did and like a new confidence in myself and being able to do things that I didn't know that I could do or that was applicable through a film studies degree. So. Um, for me, teamwork and flexibility has definitely been like huge. Um, I did not foresee COVID at all, as I'm sure none of us did, but we had this whole program like um, I'm not sure if everybody knows, but orientation has changed um, from AOP to NSO. Um, so me coming in as a student coordinator, we had to completely flip the program. Um, we got a new director and everything. Um, so that was like fun for me. I was like, oh, yay, like we get to rebuild the whole program. And then like um, as soon as March hit, we had to learn that we had to rebuild the whole 
whole program like again um but in a short amount of time like we had like a month to like rechange the program and shove it all on to the computer um when we had already basically finished our summer plans um so flexibility was just huge that's not something um i had planned at all and we had to work as a team um which previous to that we were working in teams um but this was more like I guess like relationship type thing that we had to deal with like our frustrations with each other and our frustrations or frustrations coming from like students and parents coming in. Um, they don't really know who to target. So they come right after new student orientation. And um, so just having to deal with like, I don't know, anger and different emotions that I never thought would be coming at me um, was something that is actually really rewarding in the end. Um, I feel like I can communicate my feelings and thoughts a lot better. So it's been really beneficial for me. Um, so going into my internship at first, it was really difficult because I knew nothing about the business. I knew nothing about financial advising and I was kind of just told to start working on their website. Um, so it was a lot at once. I had to research about the company and learn a lot of new things. I had to ask a lot of questions to my employer and to other workers there. Um, so they were a big help, but there was a lot of learning that needed to be done um, as I was writing and building their website. So it was difficult, but I did learn that um, you have to keep working hard and stay motivated. And if there's research to be done, um, you have to do anything you can. But as long as you're motivated, um, you'll eventually get uh, where you want to be. Um, can any of you speak to any um, unique and interesting challenges that you had faced um, during your internship? Well, I was in the office from the spring and then all of a sudden was booted into my um, apartment. So with COVID, so learning and adapting how to stay communicating through like teams and email was a struggle because we were all literally like six feet away from each other in the building. So, and I had three other interns with me that I could ask questions to and my boss to make, to clear this before posting that. So changing to COVID was a big challenge and remotely. Um, but I learned time management better. I learned how to be patient with communication and that no, some, someone would get back to me and COVID stinks, but it does teach you good things for the future because I might work remotely later on in life and now I kind of know how to do it. I would just add, um, yeah, the time management thing definitely, especially since we're on Zoom, I don't know why, but for me, it seems like time management is harder since we're sitting in the same spot for most of the day. Um, but also I think the biggest challenge for me was uh, leadership. So a lot of times, um, Sometimes they'll ask you to do something um, and lead perhaps a team. And sometimes that can be a little challenging uh, or you can be scared to do it when you're working with your peers. Um, however, that is a good thing because, uh, you know, it shows that they're, they, you know, they value you or believe in you. However, sometimes it can be hard to uh, transition from, uh, you know, being a peer and then leading uh, people who you consider to be your friends or coworkers. Um, for my job, I had to learn a lot of new skills really fast. So um, my program, the first thing you do is traditions and it's all happy. And we're like, yay, we love that you're working for the Disney company. Awesome. Here's your name tag. Mickey Mouse is going to bring it to you. And it's great. And then a couple days later, it's you're in lifeguard training and it's very serious and you have to learn how to you know, pack a wound to do CPR, you know, in case anybody like decides to die. Um, <laughs> so <laughs> you, um, you're learning all these new and different skills and it's learning how to adapt to those skills quickly. Um, so trainings can be intense, but they provide a different challenge of, you know, uh, making sure you're learning new things quickly, how to learn those things, um, how to do that with time management again. Um, so yeah, that was my challenge. <laughs> So my challenge has been um, my 
boss really likes the motto of um, move fast and break things. Um, so she said that she'd rather have me like send things out that maybe aren't like perfect and that she would have notes on than not, to not do anything at all. And I see my boss maybe once a day. And sometimes I like don't talk to her at all in a day. And it's just kind of like, I have to be completely independent and responsible and make sure like I'm staying on task and doing what she wants, but also like not having that communication. And then also being in a five hour time difference um, has been a little bit of a challenge, but it's taught me to be more um, confident in myself and my ability to work independently. Mine was definitely the independence thing also. Um, I think I work really well off of like other people and seeing them work hard makes me want to work harder. Um, it's, I guess it's kind of like a competitive thing too. Um, but just like being at home, um, I have like my dogs as a distraction. And I have like, it was so nice out. It was like the summertime. I wanted to go outside, like go to the beach. I wanted to lay with my friends. Like all my friends were back home too. So I just wanted to like hang out with them. Um, Whereas like they gave us a little bit more freedom being online because we did have like those increments where we were just like kind of waiting it out for like our students to get done or waiting it out for like somebody to contact you. Um, so just making sure that I was like staying on top of things and messaging people back right away so they weren't getting frustrated um, was just like a really huge challenge for me that I eventually just caught on to and was really good at. Um, just being on top of my tasks was something that I had to um, you know, adapt to rather than being right there with my tasks. I had to wait for them to come up to me on the computer. Yeah. And I think, um, like learning to, uh, ask questions and admit when you don't know something is, was even harder for me to do, uh, being remote. Cause I feel like, you know, having these quick conversations with people over zoom or just over email, it was, it felt a lot harder to admit those things. And it might've been easier to just say, yeah, I know how to do that. And then I would be faced with it and I would have no idea what I'm doing. Um, so kind of learning that um, the people there did want to help and had no problem with me asking questions, especially since a lot of this was like new stuff to me. Um, just, yeah, having the, having the um, motivation, I guess, to ask those things and, and do the best job you can do with it. Um, I agree with that. I feel like questions are really important, um, especially when I was at my internship. Again, I didn't know too much about um, the field at first. And um, so when I was writing on the website, uh, I would ask my um, employer uh, frequently here and there if what I was writing was right, if um, it looked good, and if it would look good to clients as well. And so he would tell me, you know, where I was wrong or where it looked good, what he liked. And so um, it was a big um, learning experience, but um, you just have to have the confidence yet yeah, to ask questions and don't be afraid because it's better to um, do something right and then to be confused and then do something wrong and have it cause an issue. So it's better to ask more questions. Awesome. Well, we're coming close to the end of our time together. So I want to, um, for our panelists, give you maybe 30 seconds or so to think about the following question. Um, as we wrap up, I'm really interested if you could give a one or two sentence kind of one liner of what's your advice for students as they're approaching this next stage, as they're looking for internships and doing career planning. What's that, that one quick thing that you would share with them? The quotable thing that we'll put on our website after this webinar concludes. So I want to give you some time to think about that, but I also want to thank you for being here, and I want to recognize that our community in English, we have such a vibrant community of great students, and anytime we can get a group of them together to share their experiences, I think is really awesome, and I'm super excited and proud to have this group with us today. So I want to show our attendees in the Department of English, we do our best to show our gratitude for, for our peers and colleagues and study. So all of you on the panel will be getting um, a, a version of this electronic certificate that shows my appreciation um, for you joining us today. So anytime you show your leadership and, and represent for the department, we're always gonna shout you out. So that's gonna be coming to your inboxes soon. 
Um, so if we could go around the, around the world one more time and have you all share um, a, a piece of parting advice, that would be outstanding. Um, I guess I would say that um, all experiences are something that you can learn from. Um, so you might get an internship and be like, I don't want to do this in life. That's okay, because they're all here to teach you a lesson in some way or shape or form. For me, I would say go for it. I know it's scary. And you just kind of want to sit down and have it come to you but you gotta do the research, you gotta go for it and know it's in your best interest and it'll teach you to be more independent and a better person. I don't know. Yeah, I would say um, when you're looking for opportunities, um, it's really just a matter of putting yourself out there. You know, never assume that um, an opportunity is like too big or, or too far beyond your level, whatever that means, you know, or anything like that. Um, give it a try. The worst that's going to happen is you're not going to get it, but the, the best that's going to happen is you are going to get it and it's going to be a great new experience for you. So. Yeah, definitely just kind of voicing what everybody else said, um, jump outside of your comfort zone, you know, apply to that internship that you might not meet all the criteria for, because at the end of the day, they could love like the one thing that you said in your resume and just give you a shot and you can just blow them away in your interview. So even if, you don't have five years experience, like you could still have like that one experience that you can really voice over. So I think, yeah, you can definitely go for it. Um, my advice is that uh, when you're at your internship, um, it's good not just to do what uh, the task that is given to you from your employer, but uh, at the end of the day to go up to him or her and say, is there anything else I can do? Or is there anything else I can help you with or learn um, because you there's the opportunity to gain so many more skills than you anticipated. So it's always good to learn new things and ask to help um, with more things as well. Um, for me, just be open to everything. Um, you can make magic no matter where you are. Um, I would just say uh, reach low, medium, and high, and uh, do every can you can everything you can to be the best applicant. Awesome! Thank you all so much for spending your evening with us. Um, thank you so much to our panelists for sharing your wisdom and expertise on these things. You are experts in these internship experiences because you've lived them, you've found them. You're proof that they are out there and there's opportunities that are available. Um, I'm gonna end by doing one last share screen that includes the email addresses for all the folks on the panel today. So those of you that are attending, if you wanna do a screen capture and grab those email addresses, um, I asked all of our panelists at the beginning if you're okay with sharing that information and, and folks said that they were good with that. So email, ask questions, stay connected. Um, we talked about networking a few times this afternoon. This is the first start of that networking experience. Talk to these folks who have experiences and, and build from there. Um, thanks again so much for coming out tonight. If you have any questions about this event, definitely let me know and shoot me an email. Um, and I'll be sending out a survey post this session so you can share some feedback on the event. Um, thanks again so much. Have a great night.